Okay, here we're just going to be going over an overview here of the consolidated statement of cash flows. And what we're going to be concentrating on here is the operating activities and the adjustments that using the indirect method here, the adjustments that we'd have to make to reconcile net income from an accrual basis to a cash basis here. But before we go into that, let's look at what our uh, consolidated statement of cash flows would include here. First section here would be our cash flows from operating activities here and we'd have those activities listed here and then uh, secondly we'd have our cash flows from investing activities and then those activities would be listed here and then we have our cash flows from financing activities listed over here now uh, the cash flows from investing activities and financing activities uh, using the indirect method or the direct method you're still for those activities you'd be using the direct method here just looking at the cash flows here in a direct method. But for this uh, cash flows for our operating activities, uh, we start using the indirect method here. We start with our net income here and we adjust it for any changes in cash here. So first let's just look at what uh, these cash flows for each activity would, uh, would encompass here on our balance sheet and our income statement. Uh, our cash for investing activities are generally here in our assets section, investing in property, plant, and equipment. And then our cash uh, for financing activities that has to do with our stockholders, equity, issuing stocks, and so forth, and also liabilities here where we're issuing bond, debt, securities, and so forth. And then over moving Moving over to our net income, that's our change or our cash for operating activities here, and that's part of the income statement here. So those are how our consolidated statement of cash flows would be related to regarding the balance sheet and the income statement. So for our adjustments here to reconcile net income into net uh, cash from the accrual basis to the cash basis here. And this is what we're going to really be looking at, this indirect method, and how we can uh, calculate that out using a formula here. So what we do is we start with our net income here and adjust for any change in cash. And then we have to subtract out any non-cash inflows reported as revenues. And we have to add back any non-cash outflows reported as expenses. And essentially, again, we're just converting our net income from the accrual to the cash basis here and we're using the indirect cash flow method here. So let's go in and we'll look at uh, how we can help ourselves here by using an equation here to make this adjustments that reconcile our net income to net cash. Okay here we're going to be looking at a simple equation that you can use when you're trying to reconcile your uh, net income adjustments here and that in for those operating activities where you're converting your net income from the accrual to the cash basis essentially. But before we get into this equation here let's just look at how this uh, cash flow statement is broken down. Now we have our again our cash for an investing activities those are their assets here and we've got our cash account plus I've broken that down here I've subtracted uh, out the other assets here. Those would be the current assets and the long-term assets here. But those are where we have our cash from and investing activities coming out of here. And then moving over to our uh, liabilities and stockholders section here on the balance sheet here, that would be our financing activities. And that would be do with our liabilities here, uh, long-term liabilities for bonds and so forth. And then uh, the contributed capital here we'd have our common stock and our preferred stock and so forth and then the earned capital that would be our retained earnings or dividends and that and then moving over to our income statement or our net income here that would be the cash for the operating activities here and that would be our revenues our expenses our cost of goods sold here and what I'm, we're going to look at here is an equation here what I've done here, again, I'll go back here where I've broken out this um, ca uh, cash or assets accounts here into the cash account and then into all other assets here. So I'm going to subtract all these other assets out here from the cash account. And going down to our equation here, I got the change in cash plus the change in other assets equals uh, plus the change in liabilities plus the change here in stockholders equity. And we can rearrange that equation here looking at just the change in cash 
equals minus the change in other assets. We just move that over to the other side of the equation, plus the change here in liabilities, plus the change here in stockholders' equity. Now, this equation here, this is where we convert our net income from the accrual to the cash basis using the indirect cash flow method. And what I'm really looking at here is not so much coming up with the net amount here, but how we can uh, look at the changes here in our different asset liabilities and stockholders equity account to know if we have to add or subtract them when we're uh, converting those operating activities over here. So what I've done here is I've put a minus sign here by moving it over to the other side of the equation minus the change in other assets. So if we invest here in plants and um, equipment and so forth. If we had, for example, here a plus change in um, for an investment here and we increased our investment in a piece of equipment or something, we'd actually subtract that out here. And if we had a um, minus change or we sold off some equipment, for example, again, uh, in this case, we'd have a minus change here, and then we'd have a minus sign here. So what that does here is it the minus using arithmetic or a minus and it's a minus change here equals a plus change. So if we uh, sold off a piece of equipment, for example, we would be adding that back here, and if we purchased a piece of equipment, for example, we'd be subtracting that here from our uh, adjustments here for the those cash adjustments that we're making to our operating activities. Now if we move over to our liabilities here, well that's just a direct plus or minus change. So if you have an increase here in a liability, you would add that to those um, operating or that uh, converting here our net income for our operating activities. And if there was a minus change in the liabilities or a decrease, whatever the liability was, you would just be subtracting that out. And the same for our shareholders' equity here. A plus change or a positive increase, you'd just be adding that to um, those uh, changes here to convert here the net income. And if it was a minus change, you'd just be subtracting that here. And that's just an easy formula to remember when you're trying to decide if you should add or subtract using that indirect cash flow method when you're converting those operating activities. So, so let's just go over it one more time here. A minus, a reduction here in a investment in a piece of equipment, you would uh, minus times a minus equals a plus here, and then these other ones are direct changes here. So if you have a minus change here, you'd subtract that plus change, you would add it, and the same for the shareholders' equity. Okay, let's go back and look at our equation here. And we're going to start with our cash flows for operating activities where we have to use this indirect method here for adjusting our net income here. So let's just look at an asset account here, for example, and um, looking at our inventory account here, for example. So for a decrease in inventory, we'd actually be adding that because it's got that minus sign here. Any change here, we'd be adding. If it was an increase in inventory, we'd be subtracting it here because we'd have this minus sign to contend with here. And then for our changes in liabilities, that's just the direct relationship. So if an increase in a liability, we'd be adding it. Any decrease in liability, we'd be subtracting it. Now remember these depreciation expense, that's a non-cash expense that would have to be added back and that's also a contra account here. So then moving down here for our cash flows for investing in our financing activities. And that is uh, just using the direct method here. And that is shown here in our equation here where uh, uh, any positive increase in a liability we'd be adding it any negative um, decrease we'd be subtracting it here and the same for stockholders stockholders equity here any positive increase we'd be adding it any negative increase we'd be subtracting it so just remember here if you can just remember one thing here uh, everything seems to work in the same direction here except for these other assets when we have a plus change, we'd be subtracting it. A minus change, we'd be adding it here.